Hello friends and welcome to this, your guide to the most haunted, horrifying and downright hellish places on earth. In these videos we talk you through some of the spookiest tales and urban legends from towns and cities across the world, and today we're going to be looking at five of the most terrifying tales from that famous peninsula in the northwest of England, the Wirral. Number 5. Wallasey Library. Wallasey may be one of the most picturesque towns on the Wirral Peninsula, and attracts visitors from all over the region throughout the year. But its charming, peaceful, sleepy seaside town exterior hides one of the darkest tales in the region. In the early 1900s, Wallasey Library's chief librarian was a man called William. Seemingly the perfect gentleman on the outside, William hid a dark secret. He had in fact kidnapped a small girl and kept her locked under the library in a cellar unbeknownst to the townspeople. For years, William kept his victim locked away, until his sudden death freed her from his evil deeds. Her freedom was purely metaphorical though, as with William dead and nobody knowing that the young girl was under the library, she passed away from starvation shortly after her captor did. To this day, visitors have claimed to witness the spirits of both William and the little girl, and it's theorised that the young girl ghost cannot leave the basement of the building, as, even in death, William's evil spectre holds her prisoner. Number 4 Granny's Rock. Sticking with Wallasey for now, we have the spectre of Granny's Rock. Situated at the Breck, an old quarry site near Wallasey Village, Granny's Rock was a favourite amongst youths and young lovers who would climb the rock for fun. Soon though, lone visitors would begin to report seeing a strange figure near the rock. Over the years, multiple reports have been made, and they all describe a similar sight. A man dressed in a top hat and black overcoat carrying a cane. Described as having piercing red eyes and an ashen white skeletal face, upon being seen the figure descends into a seemingly supernatural fog in the lower part of the breck. As of today, nobody has been brave enough to give chase. Theories abound as to the identity of the spectre, ranging from the ghost of a wealthy local to some who claim the figure is the devil himself trying to lure unsuspecting passers-by into the very bowels of hell itself. Number 3 the Bidston Werewolf. In the 19th century, the sleepy milling village of Bidston was gripped by terror as each month locals would be found torn to shreds and scattered around Bidston Hill. Numerous local hunters claimed to witness an actual werewolf committing these heinous murders, and so the townsfolk, fearing for their children and angered by the losses they'd already suffered, gathered at their tavern and endeavoured to hunt down the beast. Against all odds, they were successful in finding and wounding the beast before managing to trap it in the cellar of Bidston Hall. Records show nobody going to retrieve the beast's body, and to this day locals say you can hear howling coming from the building on nights lit by a full moon. So it's not known whether or not they actually managed to kill the wolf, or if it lies there still, waiting for a chance to be free. Number 2 The Headless Duck of Little Stanny Sticking with the animal theme, although admittedly a little less threatening, at one point in time the inhabitants of Little Stanny, an area of Ellesmere Port, were a laughing stock for miles around, as they claimed to be terrorised by one of the strangest ghosts in all of England, the ghost of a duck. The villagers refused to travel down the road to Stoke, a village in Cheshire, after nightfall, for they said that they were at risk of having their ankles pegged by a particularly aggressive duck. Eventually, a group of villagers led by the village butcher decided to lay in wait one night and solve their peaking problem themselves. They caught the bird, cut its head off, and buried its body in a ditch at the bottom of the lane. This merely angered the duck. The lane remained unusable, as now they were terrorised by the spirit of the brutish bird. They implored a priest to exorcise the duck's ghost from the lane, but he refused not believing the tale to begin with. Eventually, when they convinced him to try, he was unsuccessful in ridding the lane of the feathery phantom, and the theory goes that since the duck's head wasn't buried with its body, they'll never be able to get rid of the tormentor. 
at least not until he flies south for the winter with the rest of the Frighty Ducks. Number one, the shadow over St. Andrew Road. On the 12th of June, 1978, a couple, Peter and Zoe, living in a house on St. Andrew Road in Birkenhead, went to bed like any other night. Zoe fell asleep straight away, and Peter some time later. In the middle of that fateful night, however, Peter was awoken by a searing, unbearable pain in his heart. When he opened his eyes, he saw a silhouette of a woman holding a knife, backing slowly away from his bedside. Feeling his chest for a stab wound, he found nothing, but saw the shadow, now across the room, making a stabbing gesture towards him before vanishing when he turned on the light. Peter put it down to a bad dream and didn't mention anything to his wife. Unfortunately, the following night, poor Zoe had her own grave encounter. As Peter was locking up downstairs, preparing to go to bed, he heard Zoe let out a blood-curdling scream, and he found her collapsed near the top of the stairs in tears. She explained to her husband that, as she was falling asleep laying on her front, she was jolted awake when she felt something hit the back of her head, followed by a sharp pain in her back. She turned to see the ghostly shadow of a woman holding a knife, lunging and grasping at her. Zoe managed to escape and fled the room panicked. The following morning, not knowing what to do, Peter told his neighbour across the road, who gave him a knowing nod and filled him in on the story of the evil spirit. In the 1930s, a man in his 50s, known only as Thompson, used to live in the house, and he was a notorious peeping Tom. During his time in the property, he had slowly removed bricks from the wall in the attic that separated his house from the neighbours. He'd climbed into the neighbour's loft and set about making a peephole in the ceiling of their bathroom. After he did, he one day peeked through and saw the 18-year-old daughter of the family next door leaning over the bath, dismembering the body of a man. Thompson was so shocked by this, he suffered a stroke, and his wife would later tell police what he had seen and how he had seen it. Police searched the premises next door and found no trace of a body, but the girl was deemed dangerous and sent to an asylum for the criminally insane where she soon died. Not long after the girl's death, her knife-wielding spirit, described as the shadow, began to appear through Thompson's wall, sometimes even during the day, and would always attack the man who, owing to his stroke, could hardly move or fight back at all. The nightmarish knife never left a mark on Thompson, but the pain was excruciating, and soon he succumbed to his phantom wounds, dying of a heart attack. Upon hearing this, Peter and Zoe left the house immediately, and to this day, only the shadow remains. And that wraps up our look at the top five most haunted places on the Whittle, England. If you've learned something new today, why don't you give us a like? And as always, if you already knew every story we told, feel free to give us a dislike. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the video, any ghost stories or urban legends that you have in your area, or anywhere that you'd like us to cover next. Subscribe for more scary content in the future. Follow us on Twitter at Spatula Twisted for updates and to get in touch. And until next time, stay safe out there.